as agile actively working as an agile practitioner with the different organizations. And um, how I got to Pro Kanban was through uh, the newsletter and a woman in a, a, a Kanban um, scholarship. And I uh, graduated from the scholarship uh, last year. I had amazing cohort of 17, I think, ladies, and it was like amazing learning experience. We went through the um, applying professional Kanban uh, classes with Pratik, and then we had a teach back and everything wrap up around the summer. So I love Pro Kanban for the community and openness and the Slack channel where you can go and ask questions and all of the write-ups uh, online out there. That's how I got there. And um, that's what was in it for me. So I'm wondering, Dimitri, how did you get hooked up with Can Pro Kanban? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, actually, I, I started my career as a project manager. Uh, then after a year and a half, I switched to a, a Scrum Master role. Uh, of course, I uh, was working with, with a few teams. Uh, we, we were practicing uh, Scrum. And uh, after some time, I, I realized we uh, have some problems uh, within, within our uh, workflow. Uh, and uh, so, so I started looking, uh, trying to find some solution for those problems. Uh, I uh, accidentally discovered Kanban. Uh, I thought uh, this can be a good fit uh, for us uh, at that point. So I started uh, learning about it, applying it. Uh, first to one team, then to, to many others. Uh, we started achieving some, some great results. Uh, we did, and after a, a year, uh, maybe I decided to um, uh, apply uh, to, to become a, a Pro Kanban trainer. So um, here I am, but yeah, cool. so, so basically we had some problems. We were, were looking for a solution and so, so that's how we uh, ended up with Kanban. Well, that sounds, that sounds great. I wonder if what are the journeys of the people who got here to the session today? Are you coming with the problem? Are you coming with the questions? Are you coming uh, just uh, to hang out and listen what other people get to say to learn more? Do we have any uh, questions already that were prepared in uh, in advance? I don't see any questions in the chat. Just hello from Mike. So. I was looking that like when people look into Pro Kanban on our YouTube and LinkedIn uh, channels, what is that the most what is the most liked and most watched content? And not surprisingly, people basically want to learn what is the Kanban guide. They start from that publication from 2020 and they want to really, really learn what is the content, what are the updates, what does it mean the kan Kanban guide? And I believe this is a very good starting point. But beyond that, the, the most uh, watched content that we have as a Pro Kanban group is definition of workflow. So do you have any questions around these topics or anything else? You can unmute yourself uh, if you're brave enough, or uh, you can uh, write into chat. That that's perfectly fine. Yeah, and thank you for introducing yourself, Steve. Yes. Hi, I am. I, I'm. I'm Steve Mowbray. I believe all Scrum teams are Kanban teams in a way, because everybody. Because I believe the only way to achieve agility is focus on the flow of value. So if we're talking about understanding the workflow, you know, when, when we when we talk to organizations about that, often they get overwhelmed by the concept of value stream mapping and everything's much too large. How do you just narrow that down to the focus of, of or what's what's your approach for just narrowing that down to the focus of what, what a team can do so they can understand their own workflow and spot their own bottleneck so they can achieve a good flow of value? Well, uh, per personally, I believe that the best uh, option you can pick is to start uh, on the team level. Uh, at least that's how uh, I did in the past. So we start with practicing Kanban on the team level. 
uh, and then after some time uh, when when we reach some some level of maturity uh, then we can uh, think about uh, scaling and covering the, the whole uh, value stream uh, uh, as you said so uh, we usually start start with uh, or at least I usually start with downstream part uh, we, from the team level and then uh, later uh, as we go we, we are just expanding uh, once we have some solid foundation there Dominica what, what uh, do you have some other idea so I will tell you how that looks like in reality for me so as agile coach I usually land somewhere and they are already doing something either by the decision from the team or from the company they are just doing something and they have some sort of the process right and then we have a discussion why are you doing what you are doing is that helping you are you generally uh, getting uh, out of the system what is the system designed for and this feedback can be from the team level or from the management level right and usually i would say steve that this is a conversation you have at the beginning of onboarding to the team or even job interview or signing the contract or being having any kind of relationship with this group of people they already have some conception of why do they need you? Why do they need this role of the agile coach or, or agile practitioner or a scrum master or whatever, Kanban master uh, or Kanban practitioner? And, and we start with that. And we really talk about this. How does your workflow look like? Where does the work start? Where does the end? How do you understand the concept of, the, uh, of what you are doing? Like, what is your process? And then you know, we can observe, we can take a metrics from the team level. Like if we know, if we have defined starting and ending point, we can look at the throughput for the team on the team level. We don't need to speak on this as a agile practitioner yet to the team. We can just observe them for a little bit. And then they usually ask you, what is your feedback? What is that you are saying? And you can start sharing the feedback back with the team without pushing on them they were i would I'd rather like to have this pull aspect that they are interested what is that see what is that you are seeing what is your feedback and then act upon that and then you can tell them that you know let's visualize what you are really doing and we co talk about the how does our workflow look like what are the elements of value but i think that the most challenging aspect is that when you really talk to the teams, they don't often know where the work starts for them and when it ends. And this is the basic. Yeah. I'm gonna post a couple questions in chat because I have a lot, but I <laughs> would you. love to hear from everybody else first. <laughs> so. So how many people do we have on the team that actively work with the team or are part of the team that was actually using just Kanban or use Kanban for the per personal reasons, like a personal Kanban? So Steve, you use it for personal reasons? I see that. Oh, I, was, I was happily married for many years, which means I had to have a honeydew list in okay. Trello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see that Slava is shaking his head. <laughs> and Andrea is saying that she's using it for both personal and professional reasons. I, I use some for personal. I don't know if I would call it Kanban, but I use some kind of visual, visualization word for my tasks. And I use, I blend some artifacts of Kanban with my, uh, for my Scrum teams. Stuff like with uh, agent charts. <laughs> I would like to learn more about it. And Maria, you? Do you want to add something too? No, Maria is muted. Okay. Uh, I, I have to. Uh, I'm sorry. I was late. I have to tell uh, uh, about uh, how I'm related to Kanban, or about my position, or about what exactly. Just uh, what is your current relationship to the Kanban? Do you use the Kanban as uh -huh. a strategy for? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, we uh, in my company we uh, use. Uh, 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 framework or approach uh, which is pretending to be Kanban. 
So, uh, so from my opinion, it's not carbon. Uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, sometimes I'm business trainer and I'm consulting uh, companies how to work, how to uh, uh, do Kanban. And it's really interesting for me to uh, get uh, uh, other experience uh, to, to look uh, about. Uh, I'm sorry for the noise. Uh, uh, to uh, look, look for the uh, experience um, of uh, other companies in uh, uh, introducing Kanban. OK, thank you for sharing. I see that Steve shared some questions in the chat, but before we dive into that, do you have anything else you would like to start with? To keep Idris, the do you want to share something? Yeah, yeah um, thank you very much. Yeah. So I was just going to follow up on the last thing you said um, when you were when you were answering Steve's questions. So how do you engage the team on that discussion of you know? So what should be our workflow? Where do we? What should be our entry point and what should be our exit point? They usually get this work somehow handed over to them, and at the, uh, it depends uh, what kind of the of the process they are doing. But uh, you know, and my observation is that there is either uh, some kind of like strategy briefing or a planning, or quarterly planning, or some sort of the um, priority alignments. There is something, and every organization have this, and then the work lands uh, on the team's plate. And if team is, are they voluntold or volunteered to do some specific actions, right? And how does this land there? This is a good uh, starting point for the discussion. And it would usually come from the team sharing feedback that they are feeling overwhelmed, that uh, something was expected from them and they didn't know. So they don't have a good visibility into that. And then we started unpacking that and we can start visualizing how that actually flows and how many uh, of each of these items or things or epics do we actually deal with. And I would say that we start with this before we talk about any other Kanban artifacts. So they really understand what is the amount of expected potential value that they are expected to deliver. At the end of the uh, equation, there will be always a stakeholder who waits, waits, for, waits for that and asks for the deadline. And we need to figure it out within the team or the system that we're talking about how, how is this flowing through. So first, when it starts, who brings this to us? And the last one, how do we get it out of our system? But you know, this also depends on the context. So. Idris, how does your context look like that you are curious about? What is the what is your setup? Yeah, yeah. so so the setup at times could be very crazy. Yeah, so um, most times, you know, so we yeah, so we get some things done, and then because we have a release, uh, we have another team for releases, so you now have to pass it to the release manager who handles the release and everything, and that's the setup. So in that case, what is where do you think our exit point is when we move it over to the release manager or after the release? I mean, this is talking already about another aspect, and I also got get the uh, Dimitri to chime in. We have when we talk about the definition of the workflow and we talk about starting and ending point, the, the one of the aspects of defining the policies for definition of workflow is basically talking. How do we move the staff to be considered as completed on our end? Yeah. What are the expectations of work being done? And definition of done could be one of this uh, policy or definition of exiting from our team and being handed over to the other team. Uh, Dimitri, is, this, uh, is there something else that you think here in this area? Like how does it work for you in your system? Yeah, well, uh, I, I would add a few things. Uh, first important thing here is that uh, to, to what Idris uh, said, uh, in your workflow, you can have uh, um, multiple start and finish points. So uh, you can have a start and finish point for your team uh, concretely, and you can have uh, start and finish points for, for your system or for, for your release or, or whatever makes sense uh, in your context. So. Um, 
yeah, uh, sitting with your team, with your stakeholders and trying to, to define uh, how these uh, uh, workflows uh, look like is always a, a great piece of advice. Uh, personally, I, I can um, tell you about one, one really interesting practice I use sometimes. Uh, may, maybe you heard for uh, liberating structures. There is uh, one liber liberating structure called one, two, four. Uh, and uh, um, how you can use it uh, for, for this purpose is you, you sit with your team uh, or with your stakeholders and you ask each person to define start and finish points from their perspective. And after that, uh, they form a groups of two and they uh, discuss and define uh, the, the uh, new one together. After that, they, they form groups of four. So uh, this is pretty interesting because usually you get uh, pretty different answers in the first round, uh, even if you basically have the, the people from the same team. So, uh, but, but that can be very useful to, to um, get to some conclusion. Yeah, thank you, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. And there it's also, uh, I observe that sometimes when people um, are struggling with where is the starting point for us, what the really, real struggle is, is like, how do we actually agree on pulling like a strategy for our system? Who is setting up the priority for what uh, needs to be pulled? How do we respect the, the Mm, the, the the agreement like how does the work gets to us so this is often something that needs to needs um, work with the other stakeholders so we kind of look on this on the system level what does our system look like because people usually when they do work they just do it out of habit and they are not always able to explain to you why they are doing that this way so when you come and ask them to define the definition of workflow and the steps and units of value, this could be really confusing, but it's a good conversation starter too. Like, what does the day-to-day -day look like for us? Yeah. And I see some good uh, answers for Steve's question. What is the favorite game to demonstrate need to visualize the work? And the people are recommending Tweak. So... I agree, Twig is really good and you can play uh, the game online. You can also download the facilitator manual. And then there are two more, feature, bin, feature ban and get uh, Kanban. Do you have anything else, Dimitri, that you like or you use? Um, I mean, th these suggestions are, are really great. Um, you, you can even use it, use some, um basic games like uh, something like use case scenarios like you you have a i don't know uh pizza shop and uh, uh the customers are complaining uh about delivery so uh, as a team you need to um, define the, your workflow and, and to see uh, where, where are the bottlenecks so um yeah there, there are tools like twig is great um but yeah it can be something even uh, simple as, as that. And uh, I see here a really interesting question uh, from Steve. So the question is, what's the best approach to uh, help uh, move from Scrum to Kanban? Uh, first thing I would like to, to uh, share here is that uh, Kanban and Scrum can work to, together uh, very well uh, because Scrum is a framework. Uh, and Kanban is a, a strategy, uh, so uh, it's not so uncommon uh, that uh, we we merge both and uh, we are applying Kanban as a strategy to, to our Scrum teams and Scrum process uh, that will improve your Scrum uh, a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you want to, to get rid of Scrum, uh, personally, my advice uh, would be uh, start uh, with practicing Kanban as part of your Scrum process. And then uh, over time, if you realize uh, uh, there, there's not need for, for uh, let's say, for formal uh, events or, or uh, Scrum kind of things, uh, uh, that's the best uh, approach to, to just uh, 
like not not to switch, but but to to stop using Scrum if uh, Kanban uh, as a strategy makes more context it, in your um, case. Will require a pretty high level of maturity of your team. Yeah. I think that often what we are actually facing as agile practitioners is that this uh, there's a situation when you show up to the team and you hear, you know, this scrum doesn't work for us. We want to do Kanban. Uh, can you please uh, switch us yeah, to Kanban? Kanban is a lot more complex than scrum. <laughs> yes, well, this is like a common misconception. And uh, this is what you're facing as agile practitioner. And then what do you do? So what I do personally is to ask them, to write down the list of the things that they believe Kanban uh, will fix for them as opposite to the current um, methodology that they're using, like a collaboration uh, framework. I call Scrum collaboration framework, right? And then they they uh, write a, a list of the assumptions. The team is usually really uh, positive to providing feedback, like what it's uh, what, what are the pain points? What is that you're trying to fix? What would the ideal situation look like? And then the next step is go ahead and ask team to actually read the Kanban guide. And I was looking how much time does it take for team to read the Kanban guide? How much time do you actually need to actively read all of this? So it's around 30 minutes and thinking about this, right? And then we come back together with the same language and we start discussing this concept of how can we leverage them? How can we use them if we are ready to go into the experiment mode altogether? Because the one thing is like, how do we move from Scrum to Kanban? But the other one is like engagement of whole team because we need to be in it and we need to want to try this together. And if we don't have a shared vocabulary and understanding what does it mean Kanban to begin with, it's very hard as everybody has a different assumption, right? Absolutely. And I think a common misconception is people just start using Agile board and say, oh, we're doing Kanban. And I was evaluating some Scrum Masters organization and I asked them to uh, attend some retrospectives and other things to say, oh, we don't do that, we're using Kanban, right? Can I see it? And they just have a board, they don't have any goals. They just looking at the board and they just, all right, I have a news for you, this is not Kanban. Yeah, I believe that's the most common myth probably uh, out there around Kanban. For people to think that if you have a board and sticky notes, uh, without sprints, you're doing Kanban. But when you see the real Kanban system uh, in practice, uh, it's clear that uh, this is far from uh, the real Kanban system. Yeah. yeah, and usually it starts uh, simple. Many organizations use pop uh, popular uh, popular uh, in the workflow management tool that I'm not going to name here. And, and the first thing that you are being asked when you're setting up your project is, what do you what do you want? Do you want Scrum Ban or you, Scrum or Kanban? You have to pick one. And I feel like this is trig triggering people like, I don't know what I want. I want, I guess somebody was doing Scrum here. So let's just go with this because this is what the people usually have a bigger awareness and let's take it from there. And then we are we are basically living in the motions. Yes, Nivana, Nivana. Hi. Um, just I have a question uh, regarding this Kanban elements that you were mentioning. Like uh, people think that if they Kanban, if they do not do Kanban, maybe for example, or not that um, fully. Uh, I'm a Scrum Master, so uh, mm -hmm. I was wondering. Um, yeah, yeah. I also have some mix up, right, between Scrum and Kanban. But I was wondering what what are the like most important elements that you would consider as like doing uh like well well Kanban. Me to do what it take this one. This is the classic one, right? So we, we can definitely dive into that. But sure, uh, yeah. why not? Well. Uh... I would always re recommend uh, reading uh, uh, the Kanban guide uh, first because uh, uh, the the most important elements are described uh, there and uh, there you have everything you need to start start but basically there are uh, three practices uh, first is uh, defining and visualizing a workflow uh, then second one is actively managing items in a workflow and the third practice is improving the workflow so uh, besides these 
practices. Uh, th there are also uh, uh, four mandatory flow metrics uh, you need to track. Uh, uh, it, that's very important for uh, the, the Kanban system uh, as a whole. Uh, and th there are some uh, additional concepts, but basically uh, three practices and four flow metrics are, are uh, the essence. So uh, these three, uh, in their implementation, these three practices working in tandem are called uh, Kanban system. Uh, and uh, yeah, fl fl flow metrics are uh, also great and they will provide uh, uh, an or enormous value uh, for, for inspecting the health of your system, but also for some uh, uh, actionable uh, uh, insights and improvements uh, uh, you, you will be able uh, to, to implement once you are measuring uh, them. Would you add something, uh, Dominique? Yeah, we can just review this uh, as we go. So you're saying you're a Scrum Master, right? And we are usually looking at this from this perspective that we go to the team and we kind of like define the workflow with them. And this is actually the second most watched content that we have online uh, that was recorded by, about, uh, by Pratik and uh, David Va uh, Daniel Vacanti. And that is this uh, defining a workflow. And I shared the link here to YouTube. You can watch this later. But we have the six elements of defining of how we actually do work. And th this was already mentioned by Dimitri, but these are the minimum steps. So um, think about this of what are the definition, uh, what are the, the units of value that are uh, currently being worked on by, by the team. So you're saying that you're a Scrum Master. What the team is working with? What are these categories? We can define this together and unpack this together. There is probably, they have a user stories, epics. How do they work? What is in, in the, the unit of value that flows there for you? Uh, yeah, like um, if I get you right, like in terms of work items that they have. Yeah, 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 on, yeah, right? yeah. We have, for example, bugs, user stories and spikes that we use um for like work items and backlogs and so on so i'm not sure if that's the right answer okay, right? so you, so you, the, the team gets all of this like work items and then we look at this with the first thing that i was saying that when is the starting point for them how do they uh, get it in on their plate because they have some sort of the backlog that is inactive but when it start when it starts to be active when it's uh, kind of uh, being in progress. So you talk about this with the team, right? Yeah, we kind of a plan what we yeah. want to do next, right? And then we pick it up and do the planning for, for our sprint. So yes. I guess that's the starting point. And what we would like to ideally see is that point when it really starts to be active and how does this look like when it's active? From the point we plan it, we pull it into the in progress, let's say. There could be many stems, states and many names of that, but when the work is actually being done, somebody is actively uh, working on this, we have this representation um, on some board in the visual system that this is how we work. And this also shares the information with the other team members and creates the expectation. My observation is that this is sometimes challenging for the teams because they're so busy doing work that they, they are not uh, actively keeping this uh, kind of like a hygiene on the board to see what is in the progress. And then when we really want to track metrics, people like uh, Scrum Master or Agile coaches have a hard time because the reality in, in the time when the work is done is a bit different to what we have in the systems that we are looking at, right? So this is a challenge and a point of the conversation of what is the expectation and how do we want to collaborate how do we see um, the stages in our process when it's really active? How do we reflect this? And then we move to the third point. I, I posted here uh, all of the points to the chat so we can all follow and be at the same page. So then there is a, a definition of how the work in progress is uh, basically controlled for us. So how do we make sure that the stuff moves forward. Like what, I'm sorry, what is... or, uh, yes. uh, Peter, do you happen to have any visual you can share with us? Or uh, maybe the mirror board so you have some kind of sample of Kanban that you can use so we can visualize what you are saying. Maria, will you be able to share just a tweak with us? I don't know. I cannot share with the current uh, system setup, 
but I think that Maria can help us out. Um, you want uh, to share game screen tweak? on the twig? Yeah. I can share, share screen on the twig. Yeah. Maybe some kind of basic Kanban board in the mirror or something. Or or tweak. Tweak is a Give basic a Kanban second. board, I would say, yes. Yeah. Anything that uh, has counts. <laughs> no problem. Here you go. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. So perfectly. So yeah, he, here basically we have uh, uh, both start and finish points. Uh, we have individual work items. Uh, we we have a, a whip limit uh, or, or a way to to control uh, our whip. Uh, yeah, so basically those uh, these things are our uh, elements uh, of. Uh, our workflow, and uh, it's very important to to visualize them uh, uh, on on the Kanban board. Uh, but but yeah, maybe uh, uh, one maybe the most important thing is uh, uh, the flow. So the flow is the central central concept of Kanban, uh, and we need to uh, keep that in our minds and to constantly try. To, to optimize uh, uh, our value delivery by, by optimizing flow and to try to constantly improve uh, our, our flow or uh, uh, the way how uh, uh, things are getting done within our workflow. So um, that's probably some uh, one of the most important things uh, we should keep in mind when we talk about uh, Kanban system. Yeah. So just looking at this board to provide a visual, you can see here that our starting point is not when we get cards to the options, to the backlog, but it's between these options and red active. The work is counted as started when we pull it from the options to active. And this is the starting point for our system, like to measure the um, measure anything. That, that's the start state. Uh, the day when the uh, item is uh, starting to be worked on and the Final is when the stuff is moved to done, it's not active anymore. But you can also see that something that Dimitri mentioned at the beginning, that it's okay to have several done columns because we can argue that we actually have uh, sub uh, uh, elements here that we can measure the throughput just for the red or for blue or even for like anything you des define in your system. So. These are the things, but the one thing that is often uh, ignored, it's th that when teams are meeting for a daily, right? And, and this is what uh, people will do around the Kanban board. They will look at all of these things and these are all potential increments of unrealized value. And we want to get this out of the door to validate that we can really bring the, uh, the value out and get it validated with our customer is that we all already agree on some point that this is important. And then we look at the age of the specific items and we have a discussion, what is the age of these tickets and why if something is very important to us, it's sitting here for that long. And then you can do that in any ticket system you're using. You can do that in Excel and you can bring that as an observation to the team, asking them, and I'm talking about extreme example, why if we decided to resolve something and pull it to the sprint, it actually took us seven sprints or 400 days. I think some of you seen this and uh, you were uh, amazed why uh, um, some of the items get stuck and what is uh, the reason behind this? And then you start from the conversation and you can actually improve uh, the ways uh, the work flows through the system, but uh, by updating your original assumption on the policies, what should be the policies, what should be our work agreement, how do we make sure that uh, we basically achieve the best possible flow with the knowledge we have and with the group of people we work, what is the most effective way to work together? Yeah, th that's a great point, uh, Dominika. Uh, actually, uh... Tracking age is probably the, the single most important uh, part of Kanban uh, because uh, 
if we are we are not uh, tracking age and we are not actively managing uh, items in our workflow, uh, uh, we we are missing the point. So why is that important? Uh, because uh, if you heard uh, 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 what is cycle time, one of the uh, basic flow metrics, uh, it's uh, elapsed time between our start and finish point. And cycle time is very important because uh, it's basically time to validate the feedback. So until uh, something is uh, not in the hands of, of the customer, yeah, this is just hypothetical value. So we need to deliver something in order to see whether uh, uh, this is valuable to our customer or, or not. So uh, the, the problem with cycle time, kind of problem, uh, is that uh, cycle time is a, a lagging uh, indicator so uh, we uh, can w once uh, we are discussing our cycle times at that point we cannot do anything about that so because it's already finished but uh, tracking age and uh, not letting items age unnecessarily uh, is the, the best thing we can do for for our our cycle time and uh, uh, for us to to be able to to validate our uh, hypotheses and assumptions faster so um... so if if i could ask you i know this is a math board but let's say if that was a realistic board and you have things that are sitting here for 10 days 8 days 13 days what would you do is does it mean kanban is not the best uh, word for this uh, framework for this team or you need to move those items back to backlog and say you know what this needs to be resolved before we can move forward so what would you do uh well we didn't uh, talk about one thing and that was service level expectation what is that our business need what what is the expectation for the delivery right and or we can look at the metrics from this board later on, but there is usually already we can look at the, the start and uh, start a date and the end date what is the the number of the items we can say we can forecast that we can deliver in the specific uh, amount of time this is a forecast only right so let's say we are forecasting that uh, we can get uh, 10 items completed in two weeks and we look at this service level expectation as we move uh, the items from in this case left to right and see hey we usually uh, we agree that the service level expectation that we want to keep will be this uh, around this uh, amount of the task. What is going on? We are having a challenges. How can we address this? And there are different techniques. So I'm going to address what Valde is saying. He, he's saying the colors could be a different types of work. And that's true. And uh, where do you visualize the policies on the board here? We don't visualize the uh, policies on the board, but we can use it uh, as a starting point for, for the conversation. We can basically say, how do we want to work if people work um, as a single contributors on one task or do they want to pair? Would they be more effective? Would the people cross collaborate on the task? How can, what can we do to get this clear, this work cleared faster, right? And then we can, based on this assumption, try to do this and see if this is really improved the way the workflows on our board. And then it says, who cares about the age? Do developer really uh, care? And the motivation is a different thing. But I think that if you start with the small experiments and see that you can be more effective working in pairs, learning from each other, then there will be more openness for the experiments and doing this kind of things. This also depends on other uh, Mm, you know, context items that you might have in your organization. But I would say it's better to try uh, to do things different and have a discussion of how we do the work right now than not do anything and complain that we are unhappy and we don't care and it doesn't work for us, right? So is there something more in the chat? Uh, Vladimir uh, uh, had some... To go back to the Nivana to ask if you answered the question, yeah, Nivana. So we kind of pull this back. We, we talk about a lot of things, but did that give you the insight of how would uh, that look like the differences between the Scrum and the Kanban? And where can we talk about that? Yeah, this team really tries to use the Kanban according to the Kanban guide. Yes, sure. Thank you. You're welcome.
Ja. Ok. Dimitri? Uh, yeah, Vladimir had a, a, a good question uh, around work in progress or, or, or to be more precise, how to handle whip when there are uh, subtasks uh, in the card. Uh, so uh, basically uh, your whip is related to your definition of the workflow. Uh, so you need to first uh, define uh, your work items and once you define it, uh, uh, you you can uh, count your whip. So to to be uh, to answer your question, uh, you can choose to count subtasks as work items, uh, and uh, you you don't have to do that. So uh, I I worked with teams that are counting subtasks as part uh, of whip, but usually uh, uh, teams uh, do not define subtask as a work item. So um, I'm not sure what you mean by the, the content uh, for the card. Can you maybe uh, clarify this part? No, no, that was the question, whether the, uh, sorry, whether the all subtasks should be spread in the separate task or they can be uh, within the card. But that's, you already answered. If they're counting subtask, then they can also be separated as a separate card, every subtask to be part of the flow. Yeah, uh, and maybe um, one uh, interesting perspective here. Uh, so let's say you have, I, I suppose you are coming from the uh, uh, Scrum, you have Scrum background. So No, it... no, no, I'm coming, sorry, I have to say I'm coming from HR, but then we have completely <laughs> different uh, structure of the tasks. And that's when we want to apply the, Kanban, which should be for us, and then sometimes we are struggled when we have subtasks, and then the, the total duration of the task lasts a long. Yeah, uh, actually, th th that was my point. Uh, uh, you can always uh, use maybe uh, uh, service level expectation uh, as a reference. So uh, service level expectation is a forecast for a single item. Uh, how um, much time you will need to, to complete uh, the item. Uh, and uh, if you think that you have a work item uh, uh, that you won't be able to, to finish uh, uh, ac according to, to your SLA, uh, uh, that's maybe a, a good uh, moment to consider breaking this item down into some uh, more granular ones. So, uh, yeah. Okay. I I had this question being asked before too, like how do we apply Scrum uh, in our HR system? And how can you help us? We have some uh, initiatives that we need to deliver on the outcomes, and how do we make sure that we can scale this and collaborate better? And then we applied also the concept of like, where does it start for you? When does it end? When does it have to be done? Is there somebody waiting for this for output of the, the um, of your work? And we talk a lot about, do we need to do everything at the same time as started? Because then if you look at some items, they would potentially have a higher priority and impact and you can start talking about what is the right size for us what is the right work in progress limit for us to be uh, the most effective on the specific areas what our workflow steps look like is it really i'm handing this over to let's say anna and she does something with it and then goes to somebody does this need some approval what are the actual steps and then you can go and really see what is going on and find out some interesting insight, I would say. And now, Mike, you are having hand raised for a little bit. Please go. I just wanted to, sorry, give a perspective on Vladimir's question. So remember that you're always trying to deliver value. So subtasks aren't necessarily valuable. And if they are, then maybe you're not slicing things down small enough so then there's a right sizing exercise that you you may want to go through um 
if you're going to deliver a piece of value and it's the highest piece of value, it's the team that should collaborate in order to deliver that. So you need to get all of the people involved who have maybe expertise that is necessary for all of those subtasks to collaborate together to deliver that to done. So I think that needs to be thought about as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, and this goes back to the, our discussion of motivation and how people want to work together, right? Making everything transparent. Because if we don't want to collaborate to begin with, we think we are more effective doing uh, decisions in, uh, individually, then we need to unpack this too. And one more question coming from Robert. Yeah, hi. Um... I, how do I explain this question? In my experience, most organizations, especially organizations that have no real experience in, in managing the flow of work, think in terms of the purpose of management is to adapt the resources to the work that they say needs to be done. And that, from my experience, from my view, Kanban basically flips that in the other direction and says, the whole thing is to match the work to the availability of the resources, rather than adapt the resources to the work. So to put that in concrete terms, I, I see frequently organizations where the role of the manager is to tell people, stop doing what you're doing and help somebody else doing something because they need help, because we need to go faster. And this is what managers do, okay? Whereas in a push or pull system, it's just the opposite. They say, this is what we can do given our skills, given our capabilities, um, and instead of changing the resources all the time, um, we try to change how we manage the flow of work as a way of getting things done faster. So my question is, is this a strange, odd, bizarre way of thinking about it? Do other people have other thoughts about that? And in particular, what do you do about managers who basically um, serve no purpose anymore in a pull method? So that's my complicated question. Yeah. Um, that's right. Uh, I mean, the one of the common traps uh, m many uh, organizations have uh, is called the, the resource utilization trap. Uh, and uh, I just posted one great video uh, in the chat by uh, Enric Nieberg. So uh, please check this video out uh, uh, as soon as we finish uh, this meetup. So because uh, uh, in this five minutes, uh, everything is explained. So uh what's the point basically uh, uh managers usually think that uh, uh, uh achieving 100% resource utiliz utilization will help help them go faster but uh what we know uh, as a kanban practitioners is that uh 100% utilization uh, uh of resources is uh won't help you so we we are optimizing uh, uh we, we are managing work so uh, and we are optimizing for flow uh, of work and flow of value instead of uh, optimizing for resource utilization and uh, the the best way to to uh, describe this to to your managers is to to show them uh, data uh, so you you can track uh, uh, metrics uh, and uh, you can measure the performance of your system uh, when you have 100% utilization and 
you, you can measure it uh, as well once uh, you are using whip limited uh, pull system uh, and uh, usually uh, that's enough and usually managers uh, uh, love data so um, but how would you increase so if the concern is that the value is not flowing fast enough for the organization if backlog is continuing building how would you address that uh, I would say that this depends a lot on the context, but it's also like, how do we validate the value and what is the size of this increment that is flowing in the system? Do we need to do all of this to actually bring the value or can we do the part of it and get a feedback and then build better thing on base on that? All of this is a part of the workflow. Like what are the steps that we need to do to optimize and be the most effective with delivering the value? But we start from the where we are, right? Or we can start anywhere, actually. And we pull out, as Dimitri mentioned, some sort of the overview of what is currently happening in the system, showing that the assumption that, let's say, management have that we will just add more people here will, will optimize uh, the way the work is done. You can also, if you have open-minded people in the organization, uh, ask them to play the tweak with you and see, uh, show there that, you know, when you add two people to the task, it really can improve the situation. But if there is two and or two or, or more people working on one thing, the, the lines of the communication get, uh, are challenging and actually there, there is no improve. Uh, there's uh, the improvement. It's not taking place when you have more people working on one um, item. And, and this is very interesting observation, right? So there are different tactics, but it takes a lot also like just knowing the group of people you know with because we can take you tell you and share the what is the best based, based on like the best practices but there there's also your specific context right and and well, can you give us some examples i mean i i understand that uh, those examples would not map to everything those are not generic uh, way of uh, work but can you give us just some examples so in, so like in this situation well or in some situation we can do this or other situations we do that to increase flow of value. You're asking Robert, for example, Slava? Uh, no, I'm, I'm asking you guys. The trainers. So, so example for, for what exactly? How to increase flow of value? Uh, the, the throughput, yes. So for example, we have certain throughput and the management, they do not like it because backlog keeps growing and appear, I mean, obviously, Adding, and I saw a lot of visuals, you, you guys probably did too, but like utilization of the road, there is a big traffic and this is when we're utilizing the road at full capacity, right? So what are the ways to improve, like actually improve the throughput? I see that uh, Mike raised the hand as you asked the question, Mike, Mike, do you want to add here something to what Slava is asking for? Example from your end. Don't really have an example. I would say two things. Obviously, I'm going to state the obvious first. So, explain to the manager in case they don't know that the the aim of the team and the reason that you're using Kanban is to try and optimize the flow of value into production, right? To give your customers what they're looking for as quickly as possible, and that you consistently, as a team, try to improve it. If your manager says, well, I think we can do better, include them in a conversation about what he would suggest that you try. Use metrics to try and see whether that increases or decreases your flow. Um, and that can be a good way of tackling a manager that might be putting undue demands or comes with their own cognitive bias on how they want to approach No, this is all understood. So my question is, how do we practically, so the backlog keep growing, we have only this much of a throughput realistically, and we cannot jam more. So what can we do about growing backlog? How can we, do, do we need to establish second team? So what is what are some um, ways to handle this situation? Yeah, yeah I can share you my experiences. Uh, so 
So, uh, th th there are uh, different ways uh, how you can increase throughput. Uh, the, there is no, no silver bullet, uh, but uh, I know from, from my experience, uh, uh, we, we usually achieved uh, uh, increase in throughput by uh, limiting work in progress. So I'll be concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, once I worked uh, we with- We couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. I think it froze for a little bit. So the- uh, Now? Yeah. It was all right for me. Okay, okay. So uh, once I worked with a team that uh, was working on, uh, uh, the, the team consisted of uh, 11 developers and uh, they were working on uh, 44 items uh, at the moment. So we, their VIP was 44, which means uh, that uh, uh, at minimum, at each given moment, uh, uh, 33 items uh, were uh, aging unnecessarily because nobody uh, was uh, working on them. So uh, uh, in this team, the, uh, the situation was pretty easy. So we, we limited our work in progress. Uh, uh, I cannot recall exact number, but it, it was around 15 uh, or, or 17 maybe. And uh, our throughput was uh, uh, increased very, very soon uh, because um, we were not uh, letting items age necessarily. Uh, we were focused on, on a smaller number of items and consequentially, we were finishing uh, all items uh, much faster than we, we used to uh, before. So yeah. that's one of the one of the examples. But uh, uh, again, uh, limiting WIP is not the, the only way to increase throughput, and it will not uh, uh, increase your throughput in hundred percent of cases. Uh, uh, that that's why we always say the context matter. Uh, but could I yeah. add to that? We have Robert hands up and we have one more minute left actually. So what do we well, do? Well then I'll I'll put my hand down and let somebody else say whatever they want to say. No, no, we can you can I think you can uh, I, do, I was just gonna add that the the whole standard lean practice of analyzing where the waste is, trying to find out what the waste is and taking steps in order to remove the waste uh, is I think a good framework for concretely identifying what you can do to improve throughput. If I could just have 20 seconds to just add something there. Prioritize the right work. So prioritizing the right work is more important. And secondly, be careful with throughput because if it increases defect rate, actually that's a whole lot of rework that you need to do so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Maria, it sounds like we're on the top of the hour. And I guess this will be this for the session today. We are planning to summarize all of the questions in the write-up. So be on lookout for that. And you can find more uh, on the what happened during the previous sessions. And we hope that you are going to join more sessions with the trainers. We'll be hosting them every month so you can learn even more and bring more questions if you got inspired today. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.